The Robinsons from Tennessee, well, they recently made headlines because this lucky family has walked away with, ka-ching, 1,089 crores, 92 lakhs and 11,000 rupees. How amazing is that? They also walked away with $300 million of non-jackpot prizes. Now, while this news is so amazing and it would get anyone very, very excited, what I thought on today on The Whack we should do is try and analyze really the science behind gambling. Do you have a really crazy story that involves gambling, like an insane amount of money that you won? I've never won. At Jackpot, Roulette, 21, I've never won. But I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Share your stories with everyone here in the tribe. Now, we all know about counting cards, randomness, the various theories that are involved in gambling. And that's exactly what we're going to get into in this episode of The Whack. <laughs> It seems that most games are mathematically designed in such a way to give the house that kind of edge or advantage. And some smart cookies out there decided to take that advantage and make it into a further advantage by finding out ways to beat the system. A good example of that is this guy who is known as Garcia Pelayo. In the 90s, he wasn't making that much money as a record producer. So what he decided to do is sit down and observe the game of roulette. He was the first person to successfully exploit wheel bias in the 90s. Wheel bias is the belief that not all roulette wheels are perfectly random. Most wheels have some numbers that are unique to them, basically those kind of numbers that will drop very often. Now this turned out to be a manufacturing inaccuracy. What our smart cookie over here would do is that he would go to a casino, observe a wheel for a couple of days and then voila, he knew exactly which numbers to bet on. He travelled around the world exploiting a number of casinos. Eventually it did catch up with him and he was sued by the casino associations from around the world. So what is it about gambling that makes it so sexy, so exciting and also so obsessive? Why is it that some people are able to quit when they're on top of their game and some people, well, it will eventually lead to their downfall? Unfortunately, it's your brain that's playing games on you. According to experts, pathological gambling, well, it's not an addiction. It's a compulsion. It results from a deficiency in a part of our brain which is called as the nucleus accumbin. It secretes large amounts of dopamine which activates our reward centers and it basically gives you that feeling of triumph. More than that, it's also greed, it's lust for money and that thrill that comes with woohoo, I just won millions and billions of dollars. But eventually, there will be that downfall. There will be that moment where your gambling takes over your entire life. You'll probably lose your friends, your family, and at the same time, a bit of your dignity. So why indulge in gambling when there are other adventurous sports that can give you that same adrenaline rush, that same feeling of dopamine that takes over? There's a number of things that you can also do that will bring in that excitement in your life. Eventually, the law will always catch up with you. We've seen it in real life and we've seen it in films as well. Also, a lot of casinos employ what is known as the bait and switch technique. They'll make you think that you're winning. They'll in fact allow you to win and eventually you will start losing as they sit and adapt some kind of technology into their game. External factors like not having any windows, basically to trick you into not realizing how much time you spent at a casino and how can we forget. Free alcohol to make you just go along with the ride and the thrill. While some of you might be thinking that I'm glamorizing gambling over here or I'm making it sound really cool, all that I'm trying to do is throw some light on the tricks that can be used on you. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below, so put those comments down. Let's start a conversation, everyone here in the tribe. Like, comment and subscribe and if you've just joined us, welcome to the tribe. If you like this video, share, share, share. I'll catch you again very soon. Ciao! Ball.
involved in this virtual world 24/7 can slowly start believing that his virtual friends are his real friends and he doesn't really need real people for company anymore that same example can also be extended to virtual porn stars think with your heart and not with your brain think with your brain and not with your heart i mean that's like an age old argument but i think i'm more like of a brain person 